there? Let's do it, sir. I say, we're not at Dover yet, are we? No, sir, but there's a message for you, sir, in the wireless room. I'll be right there. my soul, I must have dropped off right in the midst of our most interesting conversation. My dear young lady, what must you think of me? Oh, please. I knew you were tired, so I kept very quiet. I wouldn't have awakened you for the world. <laughs> You're very kind. Oh, you were telling me about your roses. Ah, yes, yes. My roses. My beautiful roses. I'm proud of my roses. Sinfully proud. Oh, oh, yes, yes. We, uh, we must be getting into Dover. <laughs> well, bless my soul. Yes, indeed. Oh, I beg your oh, pardon. You. I beg your pardon. <laughs> yes. Yes. There are the white cliffs. You know, I've been dreading this moment. Why now? Well... You see, I have some exposed film in my camera, and they might make me open it. The customs, I mean. I should so hate to lose my little pictures. Oh, dear, that's too bad. I wonder, it would be a great favor. Would you mind taking care of it for me, till we get to the customs, I mean? Well, I, I don't quite know. Uh, uh, I can't... If you'll just say it's yours, uh, being a clergyman, you're not subject to such rigid inspection. <laughs> all right. Just a harmless little deception, eh? <laughs> all right, my dear, all right. Oh. Oh, dear, it nearly fell overboard. Yes. Oh, dear. Are you courier for the Royal Museum? Right. Bringing in the Borgia Pearl? That's it. I'll have it out for you in a jiffy. I say, that's a clever dodge. Needs to be for this, believe me. There you are. That message, sent to me on the boat. It was a hoax to get me out of my stateroom. There you are. I was afraid that... My dear, they, they didn't even question me. Oh, how can I ever thank you? Don't try. Just send me one of your photographs, will you? I'll be happy to. Goodbye. Goodbye. Why, Giles! Come on, get 
get in. How many times must I caution you, my sweet, not to speak until the doors are shut? I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to meet me. Oh, I couldn't deny myself that pleasure. Nami, mean, you're more beautiful than ever. I'm glad to be back. Yes, and we're glad to have you back. We? Oh, an old friend of yours turned up quite unexpectedly. He's been asking for you. Who's that? I found him prowling round your room, making wistful little noises like a dog. No, it, it can't be. Yes, my dear, the creeper. I'm not going to the flat. Oh, you'll be quite safe. I have him under lock and key. Now to business. What luck? See for yourself. I stuffed it with paper to stop it from rattling. It's absolutely the biggest pearl I've ever seen. I don't understand. You've been had, my dear, properly had. My dear Conover, forgive me if I take the liberty of returning the Borgia Pearl to its lawful owners. Devotedly, S.H. Sherlock Holmes of Baker Street. Well, you won't tell me what you've been doing. One thing at a time, old boy. Let me get off this makeup. Oh, oh I'm as stiff as a varnished eel. It still doesn't answer my question. What have you been up to? A little bit of hijacking, old boy. Reach into the inside pocket of that coat that you're about to throw aside. What do you find there? Pocketbook. Open it. Take out what you see. Your fingers have now closed on a matter of 50,000 pounds. What? <laughs> Can't be real. Real as death, old fellow. The blood of 20 men upon it, down through the centuries. Where do you get it? From a charming young lady, Naomi Drake, alias Yvette Tejou, alias Lisa Vanini. Never heard of her. No, nor of Giles Conover either, I fancy. Oh, I can't say that I have. That's the incredible thing about it, Watson. This man pervades Europe like a plague. Yet no one has heard of him. That's what puts him on the pinnacle in the records of crime. What's he do? Everything and nothing. In his whole diabolical career, the police have never been able to pin anything on him. And yet, show me crime without motive, robbery without a clue, murder without a trace, and I'll show you Giles Conover. That's amazing, Holmes. Two years ago, he disappeared from his usual haunts. And I've every reason to believe that he... Well, here it is. I've every reason to believe that he's back in England again. Free society of this sinister creature, I should feel that my own career had reached its summit. Where is that stuff? Then you you think Conover's behind the theft of this pearl? I was never more sure of anything in my life. Excuse me. Oh. Shh. Listen. Quick, hide it. Turn out that light. Why, oh, Mr. Holmes? My apologies, Lestrade. I was expecting Mr. Giles Conover. Come in, won't you? Even Dr. Watson. Mm. I take it Scotland Yard has been notified of the theft of the Borgia Pearl? Yes, but, uh, but... Give it to him, Watson. What? Well, I never. There's a fine way to treat the Borgia Pearl. I assure you, Lestrade, I shall not feel safe until this pearl is in the deepest vault of the Royal Regent Museum.
telling you, Digby, I should be glad to see the last of your precious pearl. Well, precious is a feeble word, Holmes. Look at its flawless skin, it, its matchless symmetry. It's a miracle of beauty. A miracle of horror. Steady on now, isn't that a bit strong? Is it? Hmm. Think of its blood-stained history. Think of all the misery it's brought to the poor wretches who laid greedy hands on it. Alexander Borgia died twisted and black to poison. Carlos of Spain became a dribbling madman. A disastrous duel, Digby. The world would be much better off if it were sunk in the ocean from which it came. Oh, really, Mr. Holmes? We'd hardly treat a national treasure in such a cavalier fashion. If you'd kindly open the case, Inspector. Uh, certainly, sir. There, all snug and safe. You call that safe? I've told you Giles Conover's after that pearl. Under the circumstances, wouldn't it be better to place a guard over it? It has a hundred guards over it at this very moment. Well, my eyes must be failing me. I don't understand. What's to prevent anyone smashing the glass and pinching it? Would you like to try it, Dr. Watson? Oh, I certainly would. But don't bother smashing the glass. I'll uh, open it for you. Ah, there. Uh, help yourself. Mr. Digby, don't be alarmed, Bates. Merely a demonstration. May I have the pearl, Doctor? What, again? That allays your fears, I trust, Dr. Watson. If you'll step into my office, gentlemen, I'll explain to you what happened. Well, how, how does the, the thing work? Electricity, the high priest of false security. As you have noticed, gentlemen, we are well protected. Every article in this museum is so placed that its removal creates a contact. Very ingenious. Uh, tell me, Digby, uh, just where in the building is the control of this uh, ingenious electrical safety device? The wires are in this room. Uh, uh, naturally, they're not exposed. Oh, well, naturally. Well, Watson, I think our usefulness here has ended. Goodbye, Digby. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Well, it's been most interesting. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. Goodbye, Doctor. Uh, oh, good day, Inspector. Good day, sir. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, well, there accidents will happen, which... Digby. Oh, no harm done, I assure you. On the contrary, I'm afraid the greatest harm has been done. I beg your pardon? Are all the objects of art in this room uh, connected with your protective system? Well, most of them. But why? This uh, Hogarth etching, for instance. Is it connected? Most certainly. It's a priceless original. Uh, take it down, will you, Watson? Not me. Once bitten, twice shy. Oh, Tosh, I'm not afraid of guards and gongs. Understand? What's happened? Why don't the gongs ring? I'll tell you why. Because your whole elaborate system here isn't worth a brass farthing. But it all depends on three wires. Behind that strip of Chinese embroidery. Who told you? You told me yourself. Huh? Said the wires weren't exposed. The only unexposed wall space in this room is behind this embroidery. While you were picking up those ornaments, I disconnected these wires. Just to show you how absurdly easy it would be for anyone, far less ingenious and far less resourceful than Giles Conover, to do the same thing. Now, will you listen to me when I tell you to lock that pearl in the deepest, darkest vaults in all England? Stop, thief! Stop, thief!
gone. It's gone. The workman took it, sir. Bates is after him. I don't understand. The gongs never rang and the shutters never closed. No. The wires were disconnected. Thanks to Mr. Sherlock Holmes. A grateful nation owes you a memorial, Mr. Holmes. You demonstrated your cleverness. Oh, most brilliantly. You did put your foot in it and no mistake, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Nonsense. How was he to know that anyone... How? Well, immensely, my dear Watson. By his deductive reasoning, of course. Oh, shut up, Mr. Howard. Deductive reasoning. Giving away the Borgia pearl like a pound of tea. 50,000 pounds, not tea. What's this? The man who wanted to be caught, Mr. Giles Conover. How are you, Mr. Holmes? But I don't understand. This is one of our workmen. He's been employed here for weeks. He came highly recommended. Yes, I've no doubt of it. Every employee of this museum is scrupulously investigated. My dear Digby, Mr. Conover is a man of infinite resource and precaution. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Just a bare chance that his accomplice, Miss Naomi Drake, might not get away with that pearl on the boat from Ostend to Dover. Pearl? What pearl? Who are you getting at? Did you search him, Bates? Yes, Inspector, but there's not a thing on him. He, he might have swallowed it. No, he hasn't got it. Or well, he would never have allowed Bates to catch him. While he was running away, did he stop? Did he meet anybody? Why, yes, sir. As he went around the corner, he bumped into a woman. Did you get a good look at her? No, sir. Not good enough. Ah, that's where you lost your pearl. That woman was an accomplice. Same girl that was on the boat, eh? Possibly. In any event, may I suggest, Lestrade, that you hold Mr. Conover? Oh, come now, Mr. Holmes. Haven't you made enough mistakes for one day? There's no crime, you know, in taking a job in a museum. There's no crime in running when you're being chased. Just what am I being held for? Uh, window breaking? Thank you, Mr. Conover. Take him away, officer. <clears throat> How long can you hold him? Well, you heard what he said. Strictly speaking, we can't. One day? Two? Well, make it two. Good. Good? What's good about it? We don't want him. We want the pearl. That's just what I'm getting at, Watson. One of two things has happened. Either the woman he bumped into was an accomplice, in which case she has the pearl, or he managed somehow to conceal it in his flight. If he had to stick that pearl in some makeshift hiding place, he'll never rest until his confederates have it safely in their hands. He'll try to send them a message. We ought to give him every opportunity. But how? Uh, may I suggest, Lestrade, that uh, he's permitted to uh, have his food sent in from the outside? Huh? Oh. Here we are, Inspector. Here is his tray, just the way Mr. Conover left it. Oh. Ten to one, there's a message in there somewhere. Yes? What makes you so blinking sure there's a message in it? Because he asked me for a lend of me pencil, that's why, and he promised me a quid if I'd keep me mouth shut. Oh, he did, did he? <laughs> cunning, ain't he? Well, there's some that's cunning. He's got the wrong pig by the ears, as Mr. Giles Conover. Yes, he hasn't got Mr. Sherlock Holmes to deal with. Well, nothing there. There might be a note stuck on underneath. Oh. Seeing eye, that's what you've got to have. Nothing much gets by you, Inspector. Oh, we all slip up once in a while. No one's infallible, you know. That's funny. Gotcha, Mr. Giles Conover. Here, hang on to this. What is it? Your suit, see? A note to his accomplice, or I'm a Dutchman. Yes. Fancy me pulling Mr. Sherlock Holmes' chestnuts out of the fire. Here she comes. Thought he'd fool me, didn't he? Bless the little man. This will tell us where the Borgia Pearl is. It, it means promotion for me, sure as you're alive. What did it say? What do you care what it says? You didn't say where the board your pearl was it, Inspector? Just you clear up this trap. That's all you've got to do. And see, gets back to the restaurant. Very good, Inspector. <clears throat> Holmes and his theories.
Now then, my girl, get a move on, will you? What are you staring at that plate for? Oh, I ain't staring at it, I'm washing it, see? Well, I ain't paying you to go to sleep on your feet, you know. Go on, you old bag of grease. Wash your own dirty dishes. See? Here, you can't do that there, here. Lovely weather, ain't it? Well, I... You drive me raving mad. Standing there scraping on that filthy fiddle as if you hadn't got a care in the world. All the time your reputation's been dragged in the mud. My dear Watson, I really must caution you against hitting newspaper reporters in the teeth. It, uh, isn't dignified. Well, he deserved it, the idiot. But how did you know I struck a reporter? Observation, my dear fellow. You come in here with two copies of the morning paper. A thing you never do unless there's an article you wish to clip for your files. Talk about my reputation being dragged in the mud. Obviously, I've been the subject of a scurrilous attack in connection with the theft of the Borgia Pearl. Oh, you certainly have. This article practice suggests you stood to profit by the deal. But it implies that you were working with Conover. Yes, I'm afraid I'm for it, Watson. <laughs> Indeed you are. But uh, how did you know I struck the fellow? Oh, that. Well, you come in here, jumping off the handle at me, berating me like a mother who boxes her child's ears after snatching it from under a tram. A very human impulse, Watson, and one that suggests that you've been uh, taking up the cudgels on my behalf. What a remarkable deduction. Not when you consider that the skin is missing from the first and second knuckles of your right hand. <laughs> Didn't hurt. Good old Watson. It's like you to stand by a man who's been discredited. Oh, rubbish. We've been in tighter spots than this. Not many, I'm afraid. Well, come along, old fellow. What have we here? Kippers. Kippers, splendid. I'm as hungry as a bee on a flower. Come in. Don't get up. I haven't got a minute. I've just popped in to tell you. I know, to tell me that you can't hold Conover any longer. In fact, you've already let him go. Never there. How did you know? Well, I met you, my dear Lestrade. You know as well as I do that you can't hold a man for more than 48 hours without bringing a charge against him. That's right. Have one, won't you? Thanks. Well, I've got to be off. Off to solve another baffling crime, I suppose? Well, you might call it that, Doctor, but to me it's just another routine murder. Oh? Who is it? A bloke named Harker, military man. Harker. Horace Harker? That's right, you know. I've heard of him. Horace Harker? If I remember him, he's a major in India. He's retired. Uh -huh. So he's been murdered, has he? Right. Well, and his back broke. Well, I've got to be off. Wait a minute. What did you say? Eddie's back broke. You know. Spine snapped. That's it. That's what? It's come at last, Watson. The thing we've been waiting for. Hold on, hold on. Keep your shirt on. There's no mystery about it. Y he must have fallen down in the struggle. That's all. Nonsense. Here's your coat, Watson. Well, what is all We're this? We're giving Lestrade a hand. Well, the board your pearl. We can't board afford... Your pearl we're after. Come well, on, Lestrade. I don't want an hand. Oh, you pull me out, give you the a hand. Stroud, I'm coming. Give me the a hand. The Stroud all the morning, noon, and night. The cop. And this is exactly how you found him? Yes, sir. Nobody's touched him but the police surgeon. Back broken, eh? Snapped clean, sir. Died instantaneous, the doctor said. Mr. Stroud, would you mind if Dr. Watson has a look at him? Not at all. Thank you. Watson, I'd like to know whether the break is cervical, thoracic, or lumbar. And I'll wager it's lumbar. Oh, tosh. Who found the body, Murdoch? She did, sir, his housekeeper. Mm. Said she came in to clear away his supper things and found him lying there. And that's the first and last word we've been able to get out of her. Oh, it is, is it? Well, I'll soon get a word out of her. Here, you. I shouldn't do that if I were you, Lestrade. Why not? The woman's suffering from shock. Close to catalepsy, if you ask me. Well, I ain't asking you, Mr. Holmes. Naturally. Get her out of here, Murdoch. Get her to an hospital. Can't you see you suffering from cat uh, from shock? Come on, now. Nobody's going to hurt you. Mm. Major Harker seems to have thought very highly of Napoleon. <laughs> He's rather overdone it. Mm. I don't think much of that one. Where was the break, Watson? 
One of the lumbar vertebrae, as you thought. The third vertebrae. I can't for the life of me imagine how it happened. I can. Oh, really? Well, it happened just as I thought. The icebreaker comes in through this window over here. So you see, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I shan't be needing you after all. Simple as ABC, isn't it? Yeah. The murderer comes in through that open window. Major Harker's having supper over there with his back to him. Carry on. Well, he tiptoes over behind his victim ear. Arca rises, they come to grips. They barge all round the room, bang into this table, dishes go every which way, Arca falls and breaks his back. Simple, ain't it? So simple, my dear Lestrade, as to be almost childish. <laughs> For instance, will you kindly explain how the dishes that were on this table could have been knocked off in the struggle and this silver milk jug left standing and all these knives and forks and spoons in perfect arrangement? Well, Mr. Holmes, if it's the psychology of knives and forks and milk jugs you're talking about, I beg to be excused. I'm trying to account for this broken china, Lestrade. That's the outstanding feature of this case, whether you know it or not. All these broken plates, plaster ornaments, bric-a-brac. Why was all this china smashed? Nothing else disturbed. Why? Yes, and how about his back being broken? A man can't just fall down and break his back in that casual way, you know? Right you are, Watson. External force is indicated. There's no doubt about it. Major Harker's back was broken deliberately. I suppose you're going to tell us just who did it. Yes, I think I can. I've never known but one killer who used that technique. What? Oh, come on, he's dead and done for. You remember him? Am I likely to forget the Oxton Creeper? Oxton Creeper? Oxton Horror, I called him. A monster, Watson. With the chest of a buffalo and the arms of a gorilla. His particular method of murder is back-breaking. And it's always the same. A third lumbar vertebra. How oh, horrible. Do you mean to stand there and tell me you think he's still alive? Why, they got him two years ago, trying to escape from Devil's Island. Did they? Yeah. I wonder. I'll lay you odds he's in London at this very moment. All right, Mr. Holmes, you stick to your theories, I'll stick to my facts. That's fair enough. Do me a favor, will you? Anything your little heart desires. This broken china. Have it all swept up carefully and sent to me at Baker Street, will you? Uh, all right, but what do you want it for, anyway? Oh, uh, just a souvenir. Come along, Watson. I think our usefulness here has ended. Mind you, sweep it all up, Mr. Hull. As a matter of fact, Watson, what I did not tell the Strad, since I can't prove it, is that the Hoxton Creeper has always been Giles Conover's right arm when it comes to killing. And when you heard that Major Harker's back was broken, you suspected the Creeper, eh? Naturally. It can't be mere coincidence. But the Creeper comes back into the scene just as Giles Conover reappears in London. I see, but how does Harker tie up with that gang? In the foggiest notion. Buy a box of matches, gentlemen. But there is a connection. Or Harker wouldn't be lying there now with his back broken. My surmise is that Giles Conover has lost the Borgia Pearl and is trying desperately to get it back, just as we are. Do you really think so? I'm just as sure of it as I am that we're being shadowed at this very moment. I find Watson. Come on. Listen. Have you got your revolver? Yes. And get it ready. Huh? Get it! No, thank you. Come on, Watson. Conover's gang. We're on the right track, Watson. Due primarily to the brilliant work of Inspector Lestrade. Brilliant work of Inspector Lestrade. Rubbish. <laughs> Lestrade couldn't even see the stripes on a, on a zebra. <laughs> Hello, housekeeper held. Arrested the housekeeper. Whoa! How could a little woman of that size break a man's back? Strad's an idiot. <laughs> well, what the dear public don't know it. The dear public won't worry about it. <clears throat> Funny. Had it here a moment ago. Only thing. Only thing. Let's do that. Oh, uh, what would Holmes do? I know. 
Reconstruct. Yeah, reconstructed. That's it. Well, I'm sitting here. Got the cutting. Paste. Reach the pipe. Matches. Line. Well, then. Uh, it ought to be. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> Eureka. <laughs> well done. Uh, yes. Pure deductive reasoning. <laughs> Could I was tell Holmes about that? He, he couldn't have done it better himself. The first door on the right, sir. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you, madam. Come in. Dr. Watson, I believe. Is Mr. Holmes in? Pretty he's out, sir. He'll be back any minute. Won't you come in and wait? Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Sit down, sir. Thank you. Have a cigarette? Uh, no, thank you, no. Uh, the doctor won't allow me to smoke cigarettes. But, uh, may I? Yes, yes, sir. You'll find matches on the table. Oh, thank you very much. You know, my health has never been the same since that dreadful affair at Farnsworth Castle. Farnsworth Castle? <laughs> Farnsworth Castle? I, I, I thought I recognized you. Uh, just a minute. I'll tell you who you are. Really? Yes. Simple deduction. The bowed shoulders of the scholar, the open countenance of the churchman. You must be Lord Farnsworth's brother, Archdeacon Farnsworth. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> I'm no Archdeacon. <laughs> oh, uh, and you're the man who found the body in, in the bathtub. Oh, it, it was the butler who found the body, and uh, it was in the cupboard. Oh, uh, strangled, wasn't he? No, no shot. Oh, shot, yes, of course, shot, yes. Uh, Lord Farnsworth's... Uncle, wasn't it? I am Lord Farnsworth's uncle. Oh, well, of course, my mistake. You're Lord Farnsworth's uncle. Uh, uh, and your your name is um... Theophilus Kirby, Lord Farnsworth's uncle and biographer. Uh, of course, I, I remember you well. <laughs> I, uh, Holmes will be very glad to see you. He he may be a bit late. Uh, by the way, as he isn't here, if there's uh, if there's anything that I can do. Same, same training as Holmes, pure deductive reasoning. For example, uh, I can see that, uh, that you're in trouble. On the contrary, sir, I've never been happier. Oh, well, I'm safe. I've never been happier. I've been looking for some little token of gratitude which I could give to Mr. Holmes. And at last, I think I've found something that he'll appreciate. It's... Dr. Johnson's great dictionary, an early folio. Early folio? Yes. Dr. Johnson's dictionary? I sure that he'd be very excited about that. It's very kind of you. Yes. Uh, I'm a bit of a, a book collector myself. Oh, no, please, please. I, I, I've inscribed a little dedication. It may be a little flowery, perhaps, but, well, it's straight from my heart to his, I hope. And uh, it's just a little private. Oh, yes, of course, a little private. And you want him to be the first to read it. Uh, that, that is so. You're very understanding, sir. Thank you very much. Now, I'm afraid I must go. I'm sorry. I Don't you worry about the book, sir. I give you my word that Sherlock Holmes will be the first person to, to open it. Oh, that makes me very happy, sir. Very happy. <laughs> well, goodbye, sir. Goodbye, doctor. I'm sorry you can't stay. Fifty-seven. Hmm. Only 
portfolio. Hmm. Must be worth a lot of money, huh? Eh? Who? Mrs. Pennyweather? No, oh, no, Mrs. Pennyweather here. This is Dr. Watson. Mrs. Pennyweather. Wrong number, I'm afraid. Anyway. I don't think Holmes would mind if I... I just... Uh... Oh. Oh. <coughs> well, come in, come in. I brought you tea, and when Mr. Holmes comes in, see that he eats a bite like a good soul. Certainly, my dear, I'll be glad to. I have a hard time getting him to eat. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, I just brought you tea. Thank you. And be sure you drink it. I will. Hello, Watson. Hello. Too bad you're late. Old chap was here to see you. Oh? Sorry to have missed you. What old chap? Theophilus Kirby. Hmm. Lord Farnsworth's uncle. You remember the Farnsworth case? Yes, indeed I do. And I remember Theophilus Kirby, too. Quite a scholar. And like most scholars, poor as church mouse. What's he want? He brought you a present. First folio of Dr. Johnson's dictionary. Book must be worth a lot of money. He, he's written an inscription in it, bless his heart. Out of, out of gratitude. That's very nice of him. Like to have a look at it? Have a cup of tea? Oh, thanks, old boy. Put it down there. Gratitude is a rare quality in these days. Let's see what he wrote. Watson, have you been smoking a cigar? No, the old boy smoked one. Kirby wasn't a smoking man, as I remember him. And even if he were, he wouldn't be smoking a Bolivar cabinet size, imported from Havana, especially for connoisseurs. Well, if you're not sure of him, there are plenty of samples of his writing on the shelves over there. Why don't you compare them don't with... Don't touch that book. What? Give it to me. I'm sorry, Watson, but unless I'm greatly mistaken, you've been entertaining Mr. Giles Conover. Stand what? back from that book. Great Scott! He meant that for you! Oh, that's very gratifying. Gratifying? Certainly. Conover wouldn't go to all this trouble to eliminate me if I weren't in his way. And obviously I am in his way because he hasn't yet found the Borgia Pearl. And as long as he hasn't... All right, let me have it. Yep. Right. Yes, yes. Hold it, Stroud. Yes. What? Say that again. Don't touch a thing. No, not a thing. You understand? Right. We'll be with you. What is it, Holmes? Another murder. Little old lady with her back broken. No. Yes, and in a litter of smashed china. That was exactly how I found my sister. There, there, there. Steady, my dear, steady. You live here, Miss Carey? No, Mr. Holmes. I teach history at a school in Cardiff. I came home today for the holidays. This card, Mr. Holmes, the very last thing she did. Well, my dear Ellen, to inspire her and her pupils with love. A gift for you? What was it, Miss Carey? I don't know. I'll never know now. I found it on the desk over there. She was writing it when... Oh, why do you stand there? Why don't you find the beast who committed this dreadful crime? <laughs> uh, look here, Miss Carey. There's just one question. There'll I... be quite enough questions. You come along with me, my dear. What you need is a sedative. I'll telephone for a nurse. There, there, my dear. You'll be quite all right. We... Pitiable. Poor little woman. Back broken, eh? Snap clean, sir. Same as Major Harker's? Yes. And once more, we find the body in a litter of smashed china. What do you make of that? Coincidence, I'd call it. Would you? Yeah. Curious, isn't it? Two murders at the opposite ends of London. People who couldn't conceivably have had anything in common, their backs broken, and smashed china around their bodies. Well, things do get smashed in a struggle, you know. Including the plates that are... 
Hang on these wire racks on the walls. When a lady gets hysterical... She may do many desperate things, but my dear Lestrade, she does not run around the walls like a mouse. Oh. Those plates were taken down and smashed deliberately. And it was done after she was killed and not before. Is that another one of your little theories, Mr. Holmes? No, it's a fact. And easily demonstrable. If you lift up that body, I think you'll find there's not a vestige of broken china underneath. Well, just to prove you're wrong. Here, lend her hand here, Bleeker. Right, sir. <clears throat> Easy, does it. Further, eh? What did I tell you? Look at that, Bastard. That china was broken after her dead body was flung down on the floor. But why? Why was it done? Well, as I see it, we're dealing with a moany maniac. And after each and every one of these murders, he goes into a bestial fury and smashes things. But why bric-a-brac and nothing but bric-a-brac? Why should a murderer who's strong enough to break Major Harker's back vent his bestial fury by breaking up dinky little cups and saucers when he could just as easily break up a large chair or smash a big table. There's no accounting for the workings of the criminal mind. Oh, nonsense. He follows a pattern and there's purpose in it. Um, would you have those broken fragments collected and sent to me at Baker Street, please? Oh, what's the use? You won't find any fingerprints in them. Perhaps not. But broken china is the one thing these murders have in common. We've got to get to the heart of this mystery and quickly, too. Don't you realize there's a monster at large in the city bent on destruction? We don't know why, we don't know where. But somewhere, at any moment, through those library curtains. disagree with the newspapers, Watson. The Hoxton Creeper, to the best of my knowledge, is not a madman, or if he is, then there's method in his madness. And that method, I'm convinced, is supplied by Giles Conover. You think all this broken china is just a blind to make it look like the work of a madman? On the contrary, my dear fellow, the smashed china shows purpose, it shows motive. And purpose and motive are the last things a sane man would wish to imply if he were posing as a madman. Why smash the china? The killer didn't choose to smash the china. He had to smash it. Oh? Had to? What for? Oh, possibly to cover up something else that was smashed. Some object. Identical in all three cases. The clue that we're looking for. Why mess about with the plaster? You'll find more chance of finding the clue you're looking for in the china, because there is much more china. And there's too much china, Watson, and too little plaster. Which, uh, leads me to suspect that the greater conceals the less and the china was smashed to cover up the plaster. Curious notion. Oh, look. <laughs> Bird. Matter of fact, I had thought of it myself. Oh, did you really? Then it was very tactful of you not to mention it. Yeah, what do you make of this? Cocked hat? Uh, soldier, eh? No doubt of it. Part of a bust. Military hat. Late 18th century, I should think. Oh, that's funny. Uh, here we are in the second house. Here's a, a shoulder with a bit of a chest and, and a medal on it. Looks as if it might have come from the same bust. Mm -hmm. Identical. Same plaster, same proportion, same military subject. And this piece comes from the house of the second murder, while these pieces came from the house of the first. We're getting warmer, Watson. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got something over here. Here we are. Look, here's a nose, there's a mouth and a bit of a chin from, from the third house. But the mouth of his hat. The little corporal himself. Right, Watson, Napoleon. 
A single statue made up of fragments from three different houses. An identical busts in each house, huh? Yes. Put the pieces down here. I told you this china was smashed to cover up something else. Well, why smash Napoleon? Think, Watson, think. Something was hidden in one of those busts. Something that Conover is looking for. You don't mean that... Precisely. The Portia Pearl. But how did it get in the bus in the first place? That's what we're going to find out. We're going to get hold of that guard. The one that chased Conover down the street the day he stole the Borgia Pearl. Get your hat. I'll get a taxi. Get my hat, I'll get a taxi. Borgia Pearl. Napoleon bus. Carlos. Driving about London looking at broken dark. Borgia Pearl. Here we are, sir. This is where I nabbed him. He's baiting it along here like a frightened rabbit when I come up from behind and make the pinch. That isn't true. Well, strike me dead if it ain't, sir. Isn't it true that he went in there? Well, he was trying, he was at... Oh, out with it, man. Did he or didn't he? Well, as a matter of fact, he did duck in there. But I made the pinch right on this very spot, like I said. Can you tell us exactly what happened? Why, yes, sir. He runs in here fully and up to this door. Was the door open? Just like it is, sir. But when I got here from the head of the stairs, the door is bolted. So I starts to climb in this here window. Was the window open, too? No, sir. I had to force it. When suddenly the door opens, out he nips, and I made the pinch right on that very spot like I told you. How long was Conover out of your sight? I should say less than a minute, Mr. Holmes. That's why I didn't want to mention it before. I didn't think it was important. Important? Great heavens, man. Come on. Oh, I beg your pardon. Gentlemen, this is not my sales room. This is my workshop. What can I... Oh, it is you, is it? Catching more thieves today? Ah, no, I was explaining here to, to Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Uh, thank you, Bates, that will be all. Thank you, sir. Good day, Bates. Good day, sir. Mr. Gilder, our time is short, and believe me when I tell you that lives are at stake. Lives? Please answer my questions as briefly as possible. Last Tuesday, at 10 minutes past 12, where were the workmen who are usually employed in this room? It was a dinner hour. They were out. On this table over here? You had some busts of Napoleon standing to dry, did you not? Yes, I did, but how did you know? Don't mind that now. How many were there? Six. Just like these busts of Beethoven. Six busts of Napoleon Bonaparte. Hmm. Six. Are you sure? No more, no less? Yes, I'm positive. Watson, look sharp, will you? Go to that door to the alley and do exactly as I tell you. Huh? No, not her. Just do it. Leave your stick. Think I have an <laughs> Go outside and close the door. Stand over there, will you? Me? Yes, please. Ready, Watson? Ready, home. All right. Come in quickly. Close the door. Hold it. Turn around. Take two steps forward. Stop! Wait a moment. Look around you. Now look over here. Wait a minute. Now run over here. Pause a moment. Look at these wet plaster busts. Look back to the door. Take a coin out of your pocket. Come on, hurry, man, hurry. Now stick your finger in one of these wet plaster busts. Go on, go on, do it, do it. Put the coin in. Put it in, put it in. Now smooth over the plaster, cover up the hole. Both of them. Fifty-four seconds. That's close enough. Conover could have done it faster. But he acted on his own while you had to wait for instructions. You mean to say that... Precisely. Conover stuck that Borgia pearl in one of those six wet plaster busts of Napoleon. What? Gilda. Gilda, oh, what happened to those six busts? You are not the first one asking me that. No, who was the other? A woman. When? Was it Wednesday? The day after the thief was taken? Yes, it was. Amy Drake, Watson. Amy Drake? What did you tell her? The same as I'm telling you. They were delivered, all six of them. Yes, yes, but to whom? To Amos Hodder's art shop on Kensington Road. Amos Hodder. Watson. Huh? Amusing statue. Most amusing. Is it? Why? Because I see it is. Pretend to be interested. What? Oh, a fine bit of modeling, Holmes. An amusing statue. <laughs> Most amusing. <laughs> Sit down in that chair. Huh? Sit down in that chair. Let no one else in or out of that door. A 
attend to the gentleman, Miss Bittinger. Yes, Mr. Harder. Mercy me. Here, here, what have you broken now? I never saw such a one for breakage. You aren't even worth half wages, you are. Well, it's my poor eyesight, Mr. Hodder. I can't help my eyes now, can I? What have you broken this time? One of the Copenhagen vases, eh? Well, that makes four. There was the flying mercury yesterday and the two Napoleons the very day you came. I never broke the Napoleons, I tell you. I found them that way. Well, Mr. Hodder, may I trouble you? Oh, I beg your pardon, I'm sure, but this sort of thing is most trying. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? My name is Holmes, Sherlock Holmes. I'm doing a little private investigating in connection with some busts of Napoleon that you purchased from George Gelder's plaster shop. I understand there were six busts of Napoleon here on Wednesday morning last. That's correct, Mr. Holmes. Now, let me see. I think I heard you say that two of the busts of Napoleon were broken by accident. Accident? That clumsy girl. Oh, Bittinger, put the vases up on the shelf before you break the rest of them and sweep up this litter, will you? Yes, Mr. Harder. Well, don't be too hard on the poor girl, Mr. Hodder. Accidents will happen, you know. Now, tell me, you say that two of the busts were broken here in the shop. A third went to Major Harker, a fourth to Miss Carey, and a fifth to Mr. Thomas Sandiford. Yes, sir. And by the strangest coincidence, all three of those persons... It were... was not a coincidence, Mr. Hodder. Bless my soul. Now, tell me, what happened to the sixth bust? I, uh, well, I sold it the same as the others. Uh, to whom? Do you remember? Uh, some doctor or other. I have his name in my account book. My memory for names is rather poor. Now, where is the wretched thing? Ah, yes, yes, here we are. Let's see, it would be Wednesday or Thursday. Any luck? The best of luck, I think, Watson. Fortunately for us, we arrived here before Naomi Drake. Ah, here we are. Sold to Dr. Joseph Caldicott, 13 of Burnham Road, Streatham. Good, that's just what I wanted. Uh, take down the address, will you, Watson? You got a pencil? Dr. Joseph Caldicott. Joseph Caldicott. C A L D E C O T. 13 Laburnum Road. Good. Treasure. This name and address, Hunter. Is that your handwriting? Look carefully. Why, why, no. The doctor is mine, but the rest is Jay. Quiet. Oh, bless my soul, it's a forgery. Ink eradicator has been used, and another name written in. Think carefully. Can you remember the name of the doctor that you wrote here? Oh, dear me. I'm poor at names, you know. This is very much like it. Very much. Clever devil. She's made the names enough alike to throw you off. This telephone. Is there a... Is there an extension in there? Why, well, yes. What are you going to do, Holmes? Shh, quiet. You were right, Giles. It worked. Like a charm. He'll be off to the wrong end of town presently. Yes, I'm leaving at once. Thanks, my dear. That's what I wanted to know. I shall start at once. Meet me in two hours. Same place, eh? Why, of course he's here. He's sitting right behind me. Then I shan't meet you. Not till you got rid of him. Oh, nonsense, my dear. His devotion to you is most touching. But I tell you, I, I just can't stand having him near me. <laughs> Giles. Giles. <laughs> yes, my dear. What is it? I thought you'd hung up. Oh, hardly near me. I understand there's another doctor. Same name. Not listed in the directory. Are you sure you'll give me the right man? Positive. Dr. Julian Boncourt. B-O-N-C-O-U-R-T. 18, Chelsea Place. Thank you, my dear. Don't worry about the creeper. I'll take care of him. Watson, telephone Dr. Julian Boncourt, B-O-N-C-O-U-R-T. Tell him to take the bust of Napoleon that he bought here and go to the nearest police station. catch you. Think you're clever, don't you? You can't hold me. Come on, come on down. What charges 
are against me. Now, peddling matches without a license. Constable, put the cuffs on her. She's an accomplice in three murders, possibly four. Leave me alone. You can't do this to me. No one there. I can hear it ringing. Slowly. I wouldn't like to get picked up with our passenger in the back. Oh, it's pretty quiet back there. What's he up to? He's got now his vanity case. Dr. Boncourt. Yes, yes. What you want? Don't you see I'm busy? I shan't keep you very long. I've only come to ask... How did you get in here? Who are you? I'm also a very busy man. Doctor, I understand you bought a bust of Napoleon a few days ago. I should like to look at it. What are you talking about? Will you get out of here, please? Or must I call the police? Stay away from that telephone, you old fool. Where's that bust? Unfortunately, it is broken. Broken? Yes, you will uh, find the pieces over there. In the container. But you won't find the board your pearl there, my dear Conover. Drop that gun. The bust is still unbroken and quite safe. Still full of your little surprises, Mr. Holmes. Back up against that wall. I don't like your work, Conover. I've seen quite a bit of it, both here in London and elsewhere on the continent. Don't like the smell of you either. That underground smell, the sick sweetness of decay. 
You haven't robbed and killed merely for gain, like any ordinary halfway decent thug. No, you're in love with cruelty for its own sake. And the world will be much better off without you. It will give me great pleasure to... Don't move. Hold your hands up. That's it. You know, I'd never have thought of disconnecting those wires if it hadn't been for your excellent example at the Royal Reason Museum. It has been said that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Oh, yes. I'm willing to learn from an old master hand. Come now, where's that bust? Dr. Bunko took it with him to the police station. Oh, that's a very feeble lie. You'd hardly have let it out of your hands. You'd have been afraid Dr. Bunko would have met us coming in. Us? Yes, you know whom I mean. Creeper! Creeper! Stay where you are. Now listen. Go to the room at the head of the stairs. The one with the two glass panels on the door. You know what to look for. And if you should meet Dr. Bonko on the way, pay him your respects. You'll hang for this, Connor. Just as Naomi Drake will hang. We caught Naomi Drake, you know. That's too bad. That's her lookout. No, it's your fault, Connor. It's all your fault. Poor Naomi. Now stay where you are. I shouldn't let the creeper know if I were you. He wouldn't like it if he knew you'd let her down. He's crazy about Naomi. She's a very pretty girl. Now, now you're trying to scare me, Mr. Holmes, but it won't work. You've got nothing on Naomi. She'll get off. No, no, she won't. She lost her head, you see, when she found she was cornered. Grabbed up a large pair of shears and stabbed Dr. Watson to death. She'll hang for that, you know, and it's all your fault. You got her into this. And you won't raise a hand to help her, will you? She'll hang by her soft white neck. The trustees will put their hands on that pretty body of hers and throw it in a quick line. <laughs> Stay back. You hear me? Stay back! Watch your shoulders. That's it. Give it some more. Go on, put your shoulders to it. Give it some more. That's it. You go. Come in, gentlemen. But uh, where's Bonko? He's quite safe. Mr. Stroud, send one of your men upstairs, will you? Mm -hmm. Tell Dr. Bonko that all is well. Gently, though, he's old and his heart is weak. I see. That's why I didn't dare send him out of the house. He's up there. All right, up you go. You see, if he'd run into Conover and the Creeper... Conover and who? The Creeper, my dear Lestrade, that you said didn't exist anymore. Where is he? You'll find him in the laboratory. Conover, too. Come on. You won't need your revolver. No handcuffs. Oh. You got them? Yes. Did they find the bust? No. Well, what did you do with it? My time was very short, Watson. So I put the bust in the last place I thought the Conover would look for it. He literally brushed by it as he came in. Amazing! And the Borgia pearls inside that? If it isn't, I shall retire to Sussex and keep bees. There it is. By Jove. The boy.
Georgia Pearl. The blood of five more victims on it. Well, anyhow, Conover was one of them. What's Conover? No more than a symbol of the greed and cruelty and lust for power that have set men at each other's throats down through the centuries. And the struggle will go on, Watson. For a pearl, a kingdom, perhaps even world dominion. Till the greed and cruelty are burned out of every last one of us. And when that time comes, perhaps even the pearl will be washed clean again. Thank you.